Welcome to worship. Today we are remembering that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Not life, not death, not angels, nor principalities, not things present, nor things to come. Nothing. And today we get to add to that list as we've had some storms in Maryville that have knocked out the power at the church. And so as we've been doing a lot these days, we are adapting our worship. And we are so grateful to First United Methodist Church here in Maryville for allowing us to use their space for this time as we continue to offer times of worship for us to be together and pray and sing and share in what it means to be part of God's family. So let's worship. Good morning. Will you join me in our call to worship? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear, hear my voice. Let, Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning more than those who watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And will you join us in our hymn, The Gift of Love? It's time when we share our 
concerns and our celebrations when we think about lifting one another up in prayer. If you do have concerns that you would like to share, you can email them to prayers at broadwayumc.net and we will receive those and share those with folks in our congregation who will be lifting you up in prayer. And we're going to start first by joining in a prayer of confession. So let us pray together. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquities, and cleanse us from our sins. For we acknowledge our transgressions and our sin is ever before us. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy and almighty God, we are grateful that even so you love us. Even so, there is still forgiveness with you. You alone, O Lord, can save us from death and redeem us from our sin. We thank you, we praise you, and we come to you today in prayer for one another. We pray for any who may be struggling to find hope today, who may feel dried up and cut off from you or from others. By your grace, bring them back to your light and to your love. We pray for any who weep today who feel caught up in fear or regret. Grant them the peace of your presence and show them what your love can do. And we pray for any who are facing death in mind or in body or in spirit. We pray for any who feel that their light is fading. Help them to believe in you so that they may know of your ever, everlasting life and love. Holy God, giver of life, we thank you for raising us up and joining us together as one people, your people, flesh and bone in the body of Christ. As you have delivered us from death, use our lives to proclaim the good news. Use our lives to show your love to others. And we just take a moment of quiet when each one of us can lift our prayers to you. We offer our prayers in the name of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ, and we pray together his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today I want to talk to you about love. We hear the word a lot, but we don't spend a lot of time talking about it. And that's not surprising, because love isn't just something we say. Love is something we show. Since we are supposed to be keeping our distance, you might think that it would be hard to show our love. But I have thought of some loving things that we can do. For example, calling and talking to a friend, making a card and mailing it, checking if your neighbor needs something like toilet paper. Maybe you can think of some more things. This week's scripture reading talks about love. Jesus tells us that all of his commandments, that loving one another is the most important. When we think of the people we love, we probably think of certain people, our families and special friends. But Jesus reminds us of something important. He doesn't just say, pick a few important people to love. He tells us to love one another. He wants to, to show our love to everyone and treat everyone with special care and kindness. And that's not all. He not only wants us to love one another, but to love one another in the same way that he showed love to us. That's a lot of love, isn't it? The good news for today is that love is greater than fear. This means that when we begin loving others as Jesus loves, our fear lessens. I want you to think of some ways that you can show others Jesus' love and see if it really does help lessen your anxieties and fears. For now, let us pray. Dear God, you showed us your love by sending your son Jesus. Help us to live in his example by showing our love to others. Amen. As we think about sharing in the peace of Christ, we can remember that we are a family and we are in this together. And maybe you can picture or bring to mind those in your church family or those in your family and folks that you can just remember and think of as being present with you right now. In the presence of God, we are together, and we can be at peace. Our next hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Will you sing with us?
Hear these words from the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, verses 12 through 17. Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that your Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I was a big cross-country runner in high school. And when a cross-country race starts, it's pretty much you against the course, which generally takes you out way away from everyone. If you've ever been to a cross-country race, I'm sorry. There's not much to see because we're basically all out in the woods. And even though you do build very close relationships with your teammates while you're training, when it comes to the competition itself, it's much more of an individual sport. As we would get ready to go down to the starting line, our coach would always say, I'll see you at the finish line. And somehow that helped because you knew that whatever obstacles you were gonna face, she was gonna be there to give you a hug and say, you did a great job at the end. What are words of encouragement that have carried you through times of challenge and struggle in your life? We've probably all been seeking, longing for those kinds of words during these days. Today we're looking at a passage from John's Gospel that is part of what has come to be known as Jesus' farewell discourse. In fact, Jesus' words of goodbye take up a large portion of John's Gospel. This is what Jesus says to his disciples when they're alone and he's gotten them away from it all and he's trying to prepare them for this hard road that's coming ahead. They don't know, but he knows their world is going to be thrown for a loop. They don't know, but he knows that he's not going to be with them much longer. They don't know, but he knows their faith and their trust in humanity is going to be tested. They don't know, but he knows that everything they thought was sacred and secure is going to be challenged. They don't know, but he knows. They're gonna to have to figure things out on their own. They don't know, but he knows they're gonna feel like the world has ended. To me, it, it kind of sounds like what many of us are going through right now is, I think this is one of the few situations where we are all enduring things that we never would have expected facing. I think about some folks that I was in relationship with and talking with just this past week. I've been doing premarital counseling with a couple whose wedding was scheduled for the Primitive Baptist Church in Cates Cove in April. And we never would have imagined when we started our sessions together that their wedding was gonna have to be postponed I spoke with a woman whose son had died. How could one ever prepare for that loss with the added unimaginable inability to be present for the service? 
Then there was the college student who's a senior and is adjusting to the fact that her graduation ceremony has been canceled and she's never gonna get that chance back to say her last goodbyes to her friends. How could we have known? These are the kinds of situations Jesus knows that his disciples are getting ready to face. So what words does he offer? What does he say? Interestingly enough, he doesn't really give a lot of instructions in this passage. He doesn't lay out a clear plan. He doesn't spell out a multitude of rules to follow. Instead, he provides one focus, one direction. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. One commandment one focus, one way of being, love. If that was Jesus' focus as he was trying to prepare his disciples for an unprecedented time in their lives, what might that mean for us today? What does love look like when all of the things we've relied on have been challenged, when the ground feels very unsteady, beneath our feet. During this Lenten season, we've been using a resource by the Reverend Matt Rawl that's called The Grace of Les Miserables. Victor Hugo's epic tale of the nature of grace in the face of the tragedy of poverty. In many ways, it's the love story that's part of the, the, the epic between Cosette and Marius that frames so much of the grace that we see. Jean Valjean's commitment to seek out and raise Cosette following her mother's death from the ravages of poverty is what drives his commitment to generosity. Marius's encounter with Cosette is part of what drives him to leave his aristocratic life behind in support of the revolution against the oppressive forces that are exploiting those who are poor. Valjean's decision to rescue Marius comes from his witness of the love that they have for each other. Marius's forgiveness of Valjean, even after he has confessed to his life of crime and deception, develops after he realizes that Valjean was willing to endanger his own life to save him. Marius and Cosette's love for each other is the vehicle through which hope is discovered. Even in the face of the suffering and the violence and the misplaced notions of justice and human-made poverty, love is still very much at work. Love is the beginning and the end of God's story as well. In offering a picture of that love, Jesus says, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. As Reverend Rawl reminds us, this is God's story in the person of Jesus. Jesus offered his life, and I would add his love, through teaching and healing, always on the move to seek out the least and the lost. Jesus offered his life and his love on the cross, revealing God's vulnerable love emptied and on display in a world where influence and wealth and status are thought to be the only power. In the resurrection, Jesus reveals that wounds can be healed, forgiveness, new life are possible. All of this is made possible through the gift of love. And Jesus also says, I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Love bears fruit. How have you been seeing love, even in the face of these days? How have you been bearing fruit, even in the face of these days? I've seen the power of love as I've watched community and church leaders coming together for, to care for those most vulnerable, making homemade surgical masks to give to healthcare workers and those with health concerns who need to go places, 
figuring out ways to keep serving meals and provide food, making phone calls to those who might feel most isolated, sending cards and letters, continuing to be generous, even in the face of uncertainty. I've seen the power of love as I've watched families treasuring new ways of being together, eating together, being outside together, learning together. I've heard of folks slowing down and praying more and worshiping more. While there are many things about this time that I will be very glad to get through and over and never have to worry about again, like dealing with constant change and adjustments, filtering through the barrage of messages and information, realizing we have no control, thinking about the risk involved with every trip or activity, even worrying about whether we're gonna run out of toilet paper. There are some things that I hope we never have to face again. But there are also some things about this time that I hope we will hold on to and never take for granted again. And most of those things have to do with love. So the next time you're wrestling with a decision or a situation this pandemic is making you face, I challenge you to ask one question and follow one rule. How can I love as God loves? I keep coming back to a passage from Philippians chapter 4, and I'd just like to share a few, ver a few verses that are from the message. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into God's most excellent harmonies. Let us pray. Holy God, when we feel overcome by the worries of this world, we pray that you will help us to hold on to love, the love that you have for us, and also the love that we can show to others, to focus on love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It is offering time. We've already received an offering today from First United Methodist Church Maryville and sharing their space. Maybe you can think about ways that you can share of your blessings with others. If you would like to make a contribution to the church, you can do that online at our website at broadwayumc.net. Or you can write a check to the church and, and mail it in. We can continue in our ministries and in our support and care for one another. And in the United Methodist Church, we do think about offering as a time when we share our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. There are always ways to be about the practice of love.
joints in singing Shalom to you. his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>